Welcome to the Home Ownership Podcast presented by Momentum Realty, located in Hanover, Massachusetts. This series covers all things real estate and the best practices for buying, selling, and owning properties. Now here's your host, Sean Maloney. Welcome to episode 109, The Who of Interior Design. Today I want to talk to you about who matters when it comes to interior design when you're selling your home. I know a lot of you sellers out there love your design, you love to do things, you're getting ready to sell, and I just want to break it down for you about what's important to remember and who really matters when it comes to this interior design or changes, upgrades, updates, any of this you're doing when you're about to sell a home. First things first, I work over here at Movementum Realty. I would highly recommend you reach out to one of my move mentors. Those are the agents, the realtors, whatever you want to call them that work here. And why do we call them move mentors? Because they mentor you and guide you through the home buying, home selling, and home owning process. That's one of the things I want to point out right away. You want to get help. You want to get advice and guidance from both designers as well as real estate professionals. Why the two? Well, the designers can tell you exactly what's tasteful and the real estate professionals can tell you what's gonna fetch your money and a combination of the two is the way that you need to go in order to maximize the potential of selling your home. Because remember, when you sell a home, it is important when upgrading to choose ideas to increase the number of buyers. Things like picking colors and paint should be based on the latest trends and not your taste. It's not about you. When you go over to Lowe's, you go to Home Depot, you go to Sherwin-Williams, you go to wherever you buy your paint, I want you to go and either talk with a paint official if you haven't looked yourself at trends or to go look on things like Pinterest, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and look at what is trending. We want to make sure that the person who's going to buy our home is who we painted for. Because remember, we're going to take this and it's no longer going to be a home. It's going to be a house. So we need to make it a house. We need to make it a house that people would want to buy and want it to create their home within. So picking colors that are very much trendy, meaning the most amount of people liking them, that is the person most likely to buy, is a way to ensure that you're going to get the maximum amount of offers which is going to get you the most money. And again, that's why my move mentors go out and they help. They're happy to help with colors. We go out in houses every single day. It's a perfect person to talk to about what you're thinking about doing. That way there, they can save you the frustration of having a fresh paint job that nobody likes. It may be perfect for you, but you're moving out. Again, it's no longer your home. It's a house and you're getting ready. It's important for you at this point to take your hat off as homeowner, take off that Harry the homeowner as they joke around saying, and put on that Ivan the investor hat. Be that investor. Be thinking, okay, how am I going to maximize my return on investment versus thinking, how am I going to make this room homey for myself? That's a huge concept that once you understand, you'll automatically start attracting more buyers you'll start attracting more positive energy and the listing will get that extra view that will get you that money with social media keeping up with the latest trends is easier than ever take time to envision the perfect buyer and then update the home for them that's what we're trying to do ultimately right we're trying to give people a place that they would want to call home Thinking that we're picking our own colors is really risky. Now, mind you, I'm a person who has an every single color house. I have every color you can imagine inside my house. But I'm not up for sale. If I was up for sale, would it be painted that color? No. I would have went with grays and whites and light blues and gray greens and all the things that are popular currently. This is 2021. Maybe trends will change. But currently, are my house colors trendy? No. No. But why am I telling you to do this if mine aren't? I'm not telling you to do this if you're staying. I'm telling you to do this because you're selling or you're selling within a few years. You do not want to paint a whole entire house colors that you don't want to sell at and then paint it again. That's a lot of money. But if you can afford it, then more power to you. Live in your home the way you want to live in your home. It's your home. But when you're selling it, it needs to become that house. It needs to become that item that's for sale, which means we need to have it communicate well to buyers that it's exactly what they want. It's not what we want, it's what they want. Remember, being fully committed to the sale makes it easier to choose items for the buyers. No longer do you look at the place as your home, you're now looking at it as a house. 
the sooner you get that feeling, that feeling of no longer when you look out in the backyard, do you think, okay, little Johnny and little Jimmy used to run around back there, so that adds extra value. You realize the grass is dead, and you get out there and you plant some grass seed, because to a buyer, it's going to present a lot better with grass. I know you see the kids playing ball from back in the day, and that's how that grass got so screwed up, and it's amazing that the grass even survived the way it did because of all the great times we had. I'm a buyer. I'm looking at a house. You have a junk gone. I don't care what the kids did. I know it sounds heartless. I know I said it really cruel and harsh. There was an intent to that. I wanted to bring to light how people truly feel. When we go into homes, we see it all the time. When we go into houses, we see it correct. I go into homes way too often. I go into places where it's completely set up as a home. You feel like you're in somebody else's home. You don't feel like you're in a house and it isn't ready to buy. We need to confer the feeling of it's a house and it's waiting for a family or a person or an individual to buy it and to create a home out of it, to create that place that they call special to their friends, their family, their, anyone that they want to bring by, any colors, any things they want to do. This is what it's all about. And remember, one thing that always happens, right? It's like similar to the idea of you can't really overdress for a situation. Of course, there's a little limitation to that. Wearing a suit going swimming might be a little bit awkward. But when it comes down to getting judged by people, more people will judge you for underdressing than overdressing. The same is true on this. More people will judge you for having colors that aren't that neutral than to have neutral colors. The person who wants the brights understands most people don't do it. So that's why they have the taupe. That's why they have the beige, the gray. But they know they can cover over that. But when you put that neon green, that neon yellow, it can be a complete turnoff to somebody who does not like that. I know that's strange. I know that they probably should open up their minds and opinions a little more, of course. But the truth is buyers are quick to pass judgment and we need them when we're selling the house. So understanding the who's of interior design is really understanding the buyers, right? We can understand that we need to get great guidance from our move mentors. We need to get guidance from designers. Maybe we involve some stages. Now, don't get me wrong. There are some agents out there that are great at all of them. But I still believe that each one's a separate industry. I know there's lots of different realtors out there that will give free design consultations or free staging consultations, which is great. And we definitely can help out. But I also believe in bringing in industry professionals with us. We have a great list of referrals right here at our company that we can work with you, be a part of the transaction, and also bring in the appropriate people. Remember, when we're selling an item that costs hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars, we'd much rather spend the appropriate money to correctly market the place to know we're going to net tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands more than we would have if we didn't do it. Sometimes it takes a little to make a little. Sometimes you have to invest to take it out later. The key to remember is us as the real estate professional guide that move mentor to you. We're going to look and say, if you put a dollar in, are you going to get 70 cents out or are you going to get a dollar 10 out? If you're going to get a dollar 10 out, we should do it. If you're going to get 70 cents back, then why are we bothering going through the process of doing it if we're not going to net more money? We are there to be that guide to you as a real estate professional, as a move mentor, as a realtor, as a real estate agent, as whatever word you'd like to call them. But without them there, you're going to be doing it blind. And I could tell you a lot of times when I meet with people who did it blind, I meet with them after. It's a little bit different because I don't want to put down what they did. But if I had met them before they did it, I may have guided them to do different things upgrades and features than they did, which sometimes can be depressing for the seller because they feel like they just put their best foot forward and then I am not that supportive of what they thought their best foot was. That's why I get us involved early. Ladies and gentlemen, remember, as a real estate industry professional, as a real estate agent, my job is to work with you throughout the whole entire transaction. Oftentimes, we get called way too late. Get involved with a real estate professional that you really enjoy and keep them in your life. When you're going to do these upgrades and updates throughout, even when you're not uh, going to sell right then, just make sure you check in with them. They'll be happy to catch up. They'll be happy to see how the house is going that you bought with them. They'll be happy to give you advice. And then when they, in the future, are going to sell the home for you, they'll know that all the updates, upgrades that you did are appropriate because they were a big part of the transaction. I hope this helps you find a better way to sell your home in 2021 and understanding who matters 
when it comes to choosing the interior design when you're getting ready to sell a home. If you want one of our Move Mentors to reach out to you, reach out to us over here at Movementum Realty. We'd be happy to help. If you haven't yet subscribed to the podcast, make sure to do so. Check out our Facebook group, our blog, as well as our weekly newsletter where we give you great information on buying, selling, and owning homes. Thank you so much for listening this week, and I look forward to talking next week.